team, I'm Maddie. Welcome to Science Side Up. And today we are talking about the moist adiabatic lapse rate. In our last video, we learned about dry adiabatic lapse rate, which is how the temperature of a dry air parcel changes with height solely due to adiabatic processes. Today, we're going to complicate that just a little bit by bringing water vapor into the mix. I want you guys to think of a perfect balloon. What makes this balloon magic is that we're not going to let energy transfer in or out of the balloon, and that's what's going to let us meet our adiabatic condition in the moist adiabatic lapse rate. What's different with moist adiabatic lapse rate versus dry is that we're going to allow the water vapor in this balloon to condense to a liquid and release latent heat. One of the assumptions of moist adiabatic lapse rate is that the air parcel is always at saturation. So if the air is saturated and I lift my balloon up, Due to adiabatic processes, due to the drop in pressure, the temperature inside my balloon is going to go down. Well, if the temperature goes down, that means my relative humidity is going to go up. And now the system is super saturated. So we have to have water vapor condense into a liquid to bring the system back to saturation. So to sum all of that up, as the balloon rises, temperature drops, causing us to be super saturated. The system then condenses water vapor into a liquid, which releases latent heat and brings us back to exactly saturation. So let's think about the total change in temperature inside the balloon as the sum of the change in temperature due to the drop in pressure and the change in temperature from latent heating. We know that the change in temperature from the change in pressure, this is a negative change. But like we learned two videos ago with latent heating, um, when I'm going from a more energetic state to a less energetic state, when we have condensation going on, that's actually going to warm the environment. So this would be a positive change. We can calculate each of these values numerically, um, given some initial concentration of water vapor in the balloon, but as with deriving dry adiabatic lapse rate, it requires the use of some thermodynamic equations we haven't learned yet. So we're just gonna put a pin in that and I'm going to sort of tell you the final answer that the change due to the drop in pressure, this guy is bigger than this change, the, the positive. So we still get a total, a net negative change in temperature. The temperature of my balloon still drops as it rises, but it doesn't drop as fast as it would without this latent heat process going on. So a good number for moist adiabatic lapse rate is going to be somewhere between five and nine degrees Celsius per kilometer. So not quite as fast as that 10 degrees Celsius per kilometer we found for dry adiabatic lapse rate. Okay team, that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you liked this video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye team.